Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give all praise to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Prayer to the Most High blesses this lesson this afternoon. Gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past in order to understand the events that are currently <clears throat> happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of things that are soon to come on the earth. We're going to be continuing on with talking about the destruction that is to come on the on the world. And uh, it's kind of an extension, kind of like a part two, because I talked about what was going to happen here in our lands. And you have to understand that, you know, get that, con that understanding that in our lands, there's going to be a renewal. How the Most High uh, renews our lands is by Numbers 35 and 33, by shedding the blood of the ones who shed our blood in order to cleanse the land. Once you understand that, and then you go into the other scriptures where it talks about all the destruction that's going on everywhere, you can't have both things going on. Just like during the time of Egypt, you know, Goshen was the land of refuge. And Most High says this is going to be just like the same kind of a thing going on. And there's going to be, there was a land of refuge back then. The uh, destroyer that is uh, soon to come on the earth has been here before. It was also here during the times of Egypt when we were going through the, uh, the plagues, the 10 plagues. So we were protected in Goshen at that time, even when the destroyer was here. So then it would make sense that we would have a Goshen-like land to return to while the rest of the world is going through its punishment. We're going to be putting together quite a few writings um, in order to get a much better understanding of how things are to play out here at the end. We're going to, you know, through the fact that they only gave us 80 books, they're always pushing the destruction happening over here in the Americas. And the true people who have been in control of absolutely everything in our destruction, they are left on the sidelines with nothing happening to them. The Bible and the other scriptures um, and the historical events show a totally different story. And we're going to get into that right now. First, we're going to start with the Old Testament pseudepigrapha. Okay, so if you have that, go ahead and jump on in there. We're going to be starting with something you guys are very familiar with, the Apocalypse of Abraham. Okay, we're going to be going kind of quick, because like I said, you know, straight into this uh, lesson, because there's a lot of information that we have to go through today. But what you're going to see is that this information parallels other other works. All right. So before Apocalypse of Abraham uh, 29, before the age of justice starts to grow, my judgment will come upon the heathen who have acted wickedly through the people of your seed, who have been set apart for me. Now, this part here in chapter 29 looks as if it's things that are happening here on our on our promised land. Okay, so like I said, two types of destruction. What happens in our promised land and then what happens to the rest of the world. Okay, now watch. Uh, let's see. Who have been set apart for me. In those days, I will bring upon all earthly creation ten plagues through evil and disease and the groaning of the bitterness of their souls. Such will I bring upon the generations of those who are on it out of anger and corruption okay, of their creation, with which they provoke me. So these other nations have, you know, created a whole society, a whole Babylon, you know, society, a whole society of Babel, confusion. And, and they've done this to provoke the Most High. And he talks a lot about how their sins have reached up to him. And then, you know, after he, if they, if their sins have reached up to him, he's not going to take it anymore, okay? And then from your seed will be left the righteous men, and their number, protected by me, who strive in the glory of my name toward the place prepared beforehand for, for them. So he's going to be protecting a certain, you know, group of men, you know, and I'm just going to be men and women, you know, and children that the Most High is going to be protecting and a place already set up beforehand for them. So therefore, it, was, it makes it sound as if it's going to be the lands that have been, you know, set aside for us, our inheritance. We're going to be protected there. Okay, that's what it, that's what this in here in chapter 29 seems to be talking about. Okay, 
So now let's continue. Let's say prepare for hand friend, which you saw deserted in the picture. And they will live, being affirmed by the sacrifices and the gifts of justice and truth in the age of justice. So they're going our people are going to be living in our inheritance, in our lands, okay? And they will rejoice forever in me. And they will destroy those who have destroyed them. There's your recompense right there. There's your numbers 35 and 33. Destroying the ones who destroyed us. Going from being um, the fishers to the hunters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the link to this specific video that goes into this about our lands in the description box. So if you haven't watched that one, you can watch that one first. Or after that, you can watch, you know, you can watch the other one after this one, however you want to look at it. Okay. So as you can see, there's something going on right here. Destroying the ones who destroyed us, okay, in our own lands. And it says, uh, let's see here. I'm going to read that part again. And they will rejoice forever in me. And they will destroy those who have destroyed them. They will rebuke those who have, uh, who have rebuked them through their mockery. And they will spit in their faces. So quick for quick review, let's just go ahead and read that numbers 35 and 33 real quick. And how you cleanse the lands. Okay, I'm going to go kind of slow. I said also, I said because uh, the Most High is giving me more things to to add as I'm uh, going through this video here. Uh, so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So that goes exactly with what's talking about here in Apocalypse of Abraham and how to cleanse the lands. All right. So let's see here. Those rebuked by me when, uh, when they are to see me rejoicing with my people for those who rejoice and receive and truly return to me. See, Abraham, what you have seen here. OK, what you have heard, know that you have known. Go to your inheritance and behold. I am with you forever. Okay, so this pretty much goes ahead, it goes with hand in hand with uh, Joel two, and the uh, restoration of the Most High's lands and His people. Now we know that. Let's see what's going forward. Now we know about the, our lands, the, the Goshen-like lands, the place of refuge for the Most High's chosen people. Now let's just continue with thirty and take a look at what's going on with the rest of the world. And while he was still speaking, I found myself on the earth. And I said, Eternal Mighty One, I am no longer in the glory in which I was above. And all that my soul desired to understand in my heart, I do not understand. And he said to me, I will explain to you the things you desired in your heart. For you have sought to know the ten plagues, which I prepared against the heathen. And I prepared them beforehand in the passing of the twelve hours on earth. Hear what I tell you. It will be thus, the first sorrow for much need. And that's setting up right now, food shortages, shortages of many other things. Um, you know, the, these economies, you know, going down, being taken down. The next one, okay, is a, the second fiery conflagrations of the cities. Now, you know, talking about these uh, incoming asteroids, these things that are coming. Everyone else is always talking about, you know, nuclear fire and things like that. But even in Daniel, uh, the statue of in Daniel, at the end, it shows like this huge asteroid or something else coming and destroying all the nations. And with the conflagrations right here, in case you don't know exactly what conflagration is, is this an extensive fire which destroys a great deal of land or property. All right, so that's what's on tap next. And it kind of seems like right now with all these people, these, these CEOs and these uh, elites have been running since last year. They've been quitting their positions and running and going to their bunkers. So they are anticipating something. Um, right now, we got people still doing the same thing right now. You got high-ranking military officials running into their bunkers right now. So apparently, they're, they know these the order, and they know that there's a conflagration of the cities is coming. And therefore, they are pretty much getting out of the cities and getting out of certain areas because they already know what's coming. Even if people say, I don't believe you uh, or whatever else, you know, prove otherwise. You know, I hear that quite a bit from people. All they do is just come and give the same two or three verses that they've been, um, you know, programmed to 
to give, and then they give no explanation of absolutely anything. But the actions of the um, of the other side, the, the wicked, is confirming pretty much what you're seeing right here in these books. All right. The third, destruction by pestilence among the cattle. The fourth, famine of the world, of the of their generation. The fifth, among the rulers, destruction by earthquake and the sword. The sixth, increase of hail and snow. The seventh, wild beasts will be their grave. The eighth, pestilence and hunger will change their destruction. The ninth, execution okay, by the sword and flight in distress. The tenth, thunder, voices, and destroying earthquakes. All right, so let's continue. We've got the conflagration already. This destroyer is going to be coming, and the destroyer was here before. And we're going to get into that later on, how the destroyer was here before, and that many have just hidden this information. And that's why many people don't, you know, they, they make up and hold another alternate ending. But the destroyer, it was here before, and the destroyer is going to come again. And it seems like it's going to be here very soon. We're going to continue here and finish up the Apocalypse of Abraham. Humiliated by the heathen, and I will burn with fire. Well, hold on. Let's get that last part here. Uh, and then I will sound the trumpet out of the air, and I will send my chosen one, having in him one measure of all my power, and he will summon my people. Okay. Humiliated by the heathen. So the, our people have been scattered to the four corners. They've been humiliated by the heathen, and the Most High is going to summon them. Okay, and I'm going to get into that in another book, in the Apocalypse of Elijah, about the summoning and how he moves them, okay? And I will burn with fire those who mocked them and ruled over them in this age. So he's summoning his people, he's taking them somewhere, and then after that, he's going to be burning, you know, the people and these just different areas that have uh, ruled over his people and mocked them. So again, and I will burn with fire those who mock them and ruled over them in this age. And I will deliver those who have covered me with mockery over to the scorn of the coming age. So the ones who have put up good times Jesus, the ones who have been lying about absolutely everything. He's got destruction for them. And that all originated over there, over in the three parts. It all originated with the abominable church. So does it make any sense that he's going to be just destroying all of America but then not doing anything to the rest of the world where everything originated. Makes no sense. But as you can tell, he's moving certain people, and then he's destroying those areas. Okay? Now it says, uh, Because I have prepared them to be food for the fire of Hades, and to be ceaseless, soaring in the air of the underworld regions, of the uttermost, uttermost depths, to be the contents of a wormy belly. For the makers will see in them justice, the makers who have been chosen, um, who have chosen my desire and manifestly kept my commandments. And they will rejoice in merrymaking over the downfall of the men who remain and who uh, followed after the idols and after their, uh, after their murders. So the people, his people are rejoicing. They're seeing the uh, downfall of the wicked. Uh, for they shall uh, putrefy, okay, in the belly of the uh, crafty worm Azazel and be burned by the fire of Azazel's tongue. For I waited so they might come to me, and they did not uh, deign to. And they glorified an alien god, good times Jesus right there, <clears throat> and they joined one uh, to whom they had not been allotted. And they abandoned the Lord and gave them strength. So uh, same thing with the prayers, just like they're trying to do today. They're trying to get us to uh, join in with them and pray to their God, okay? They're trying, and they're abandoning the Most High, the one that actually really gives them strength. <clears throat> that's exactly what's going on, and that's what they're talking about right here, and we've been talking about it in the last few videos. Therefore hear, Abraham, and see, behold, <clears throat> your seventh generation shall go with you, and they will go out into an alien land, and they will uh, enslave them and oppress them, as for one hour in the impia, of the impious age. But of the nation whom they shall serve, I am the judge. And the Lord said this too. Have you heard, Abraham, what I told you? What your tribe will encounter in the last days. Abraham, having heard, accepted the words of the Most High in his heart. 
and that goes 400 years. That's actually um, talking about Gen uh, Genesis 15, 13, and um, 16, 19 to 2019. All of a sudden, all this stuff has just started after that 400 years. We know it's been going on for since 1492 and 1452 with the Dumb Diversus. <clears throat> but this has been going on for a very long time. So let's continue. Now we're going to get into the apocalypse of Elijah. And it's talking about the removal of the righteous. And that's what we're going to be looking at right now. We talked about that also in um, Apocalypse of Abraham, but this is going to give you a little bit more understanding. Okay? Apocalypse of Elijah is still in the uh, Old Testament the pseudepigrapha. The removal of the righteous. On that day, the Christ will pity those who are his own. And he will send from heaven his 64,000 angels, each of whom has six wings. The sound will remove heaven and earth when they give praise and glorify. Now those upon whose forehead the name of Christ is written and upon those whose hand is the seal, both the small and the great, will be taken up upon their wings and lifted up before his wrath. So before the wrath comes, this is what they're talking about doing right here. All right, the removal of the saints. Now, gives you a little bit more information under here. Then Gabriel and Uriel will become a pillar of light, leading them into the holy, the holy land. It will be granted to them to eat from the tree of life. They will wear white garments, and angels will watch over them. They will not thirst, nor will the son of lawlessness be able to prevail over them. So they're removed to another, another area, another land. They're taken away from being around the wicked. Okay? So there's a land that's being prepared, you know, it's being, it's, it's being um, cleansed, and then those people are going to be moved there. You know, that's what I've seen, you know, I said, so that's what um, these different books are showing me, you know, so that's what, I, that's what I'm just taking with a grain of salt, however you want to look at it. I said, do your own research, but this is what the Most High is showing me through these, through these different books. If they had the exact order and how everything's going to happen, we'll see exactly. I mean, sometimes things are happening simultaneously. Um, so the way things are written, you know, so it's just like you have to do a lot of studying and a lot of praying and, and uh, getting a lot of guidance, okay? Now, if you look at this, <clears throat> natural disasters which follow the removal of the righteous. This connects with Revelation 11. Revelation chapter 11 <clears throat> and let's see here let's start, at, let's start at eight and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called sodom and egypt okay so you're also talking about over there where a lot of these uh you know these things started you know the wicked started all these things many of these things over there in their lands you know, that's why you call them Sodom and Egypt. Egypt was declared in the land of Egypt, you know, back then, but it also was declared again in 1452 uh, under Dumb Diversus. So that could make uh, actually, you know, Rome, uh, Egypt again, because of the things that they proclaimed and the things that they've been doing to our people. All right. Uh, let's see, where also our Lord was crucified, where they, they lifted up their good times, Jesus, their Caesarea. Okay. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Talking about the, uh, the 12 tribes, northern and southern kingdoms. All right. And after the three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them, and they stood up upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Okay, so the awakening of the twelve tribes. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So there's the removal of the righteous. Now look at the 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain men of men, 7,000, and the uh, remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. So after the removal of the righteous, then destruction comes. Okay, and the destruction is going to come on their lands. 
Now let's read a little bit here of the natural disasters which follow the removal of the righteous. And on that day the earth will be disturbed, and the sun will darken, and peace will be removed from the earth. The birds will fall on the earth dead. The earth will be dry. The waters of the sea will dry up. The sinners will groan okay, <clears throat> upon the earth, saying, What have you done to us, O son of lawlessness? Saying, I am the Christ, when you are the devil. See, they, they, they try to push the whole Antichrist thing is happening in the future. And when it's already happened, when they remove the righteous, then all of a sudden there's not going to be any righteous around them. There will be your famine of the word. Then they'll understand, you know, the error of their ways. It says, you are unable to save yourself so that you might save us. You produce signs in our presence until you alienated, alienated us from the Christ who created us. Woe to us because we listen to you. Lo, now we will die in a famine, okay, where indeed is now the trace of a righteous one, and we will worship him. See, there's no, no, the sons and daughters of the Most High have been removed, and uh, now they're like, you know, we'll listen to, we'll listen to them if, you know, if, they're, if we could find one. If we can find someone who can teach, teach us the truth, we would listen to them, but they're not going to be able to find any at that time, okay? Or where indeed is the one who will teach us? And we will appeal to him. See, they want now they want instruction. Now that they've been removed and taken to, you know, their inheritance, now the other nations want, you know, want to be instructed. All right. Let's see here. Now, indeed, we will be wrathfully destroyed because we disobeyed the Most High. We went to the deep places of the sea, and we did not find water. We dug in the rivers and papyrus reeds, and we did not find water. So no water, destruction. And they understand that now that, you know, the Most High has taken away, the Most High has you know, taken his people away from them, that they're going to be destroyed. You can read the next part on your own, okay? I'm going to go ahead and continue. So, like I said, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. So now that we're getting more understanding... We know that these things are happening. We're getting more understanding. Just like the Most High said at the end, knowledge will be increased. He's got to give us this other, he got to give us this other information, understanding that has been hidden. And it's been hidden by the Church of Mahan. It's been hidden by the Mahan priests. And it's been hidden by all the ones who have made a covenant with them. So that's why as we bring these things out, we get people trying, you know, oh, you're wrong. Well, if that's all, I mean, it's not as easy as you're wrong. You need to prevent, present facts. And they've had, you know, hundreds of years, thousands of years to produce facts and to actually tell us the truth. And they never have. And they never will. Isaiah 47. I'm going to show you a little bit about how Babylon has been doing their best to hide themselves. And that's exactly what they've been doing. They've been, you know, hiding themselves. So we're going to read a couple of verses here in Isaiah 47. Therefore, hear now this, okay? Thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Talking about Babylon. You know, that they're, they're not, they feel like they're never going to, you know, the church, their church, Church of Mahan. You know, that they're not going to ever have to suffer anything because they've hidden themselves. And no one can figure them out because as long as you only read the 80 books, you're not going to figure that out. You're going to be stuck on America, 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 which is what they want. They want you worrying about, you know, the place where you were destroyed in your own lands. They want you to destroy your own lands. They're, they're hoping for the destruction of your lands. And see, that makes a lot of sense when you start to think about it. They want to see the Hebrew inheritance destroyed. That's why they push that. They don't want to see their, you know, their lands destroyed. They want to see yours destroyed. And all the way to the end, you know, when people are praying for the destruction of Babylon, they're praying for the destruction of America. Again, you're praying, you know, against your own lands. You're praying against your own inheritance. And you're giving the other, um, the other nations, you're giving the wicked power. You're giving them your prayers to destroy your own lands. You see how everything is just twisted. So that's why you got all these people who are making these videos and are always talking about, you know, the destruction of America and how wicked America is. I was like, wait, uh, what are you talking about? I said, the people who brought people were the ones who brought that wickedness over here. So you need to destroy the original wickedness, not worry about, you know, your lands. 
But that's what the 80 books do. All right, let's go with the number nine. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come up upon uh, thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. Those sorceries and enchantments originated in Rome when they established the abominable church, when the devil was established, established that church over there. Okay? For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. See, that's the main thing right there. They're saying that none, you know, Babylon, the church over there, no one sees me. No one figures, has figured out the fact that I'm the one that's pulling the strings. They're too busy looking at America and the things that are happening here, but they're being, you know, they're happening here because of the wickedness and the soothsayers of the church of Mahan. So that's why these things are in here. No one sees me. I, I can do all these things over here and no one wants my destruction. They only want the destruction of their own lands. They're praying for the destruction of the Americas, the, the, um, the lands that the Most High had given us. See, every, you got to understand everything that we've been taught is backwards. And many have just stopped with the fact that we're the, the most high chosen people and then haven't gone any further than that. Everything is in reverse. Okay? So again, let's read that again. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. Okay. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. And see, the whole you know Babylonian society is falling apart, and people are having a very difficult time dealing with it. That's why they're rushing to try to reopen everything. You know, thinking that, like, just like that video yesterday, that the devil is the one who's con who, who uh, shut down the churches and shut down society, and that they, <clears throat> you know, you know, responsible individuals, you know, will be able to just uh, open everything back up and go back to life as usual. Does you know, destruction has come like quickly. The destruction of their society, the destruction of their way of life has come quickly. Their desolation, and they're having a very difficult time dealing with it. And the more you're at home, the more time you have to kind of just think about things. And these people are seeing it. They're, they're you know, just reminiscing on the good old days. And they want to, you know, go back to that. It's like, how do you think that, um, I, don't, I don't understand how um, you can have thousands of people supposedly dying a day, but then you want to rush that rope, open up everything. It makes no sense. But, you know, these empty vessels never make any sense. Okay. So like I said, they tried to hide themselves. The Council of Nicaea gave you those 80 books. And those 80s books were set up in a certain way as to hide Babylon. That's why they that's why the Bible stops right before the formation of this church. So then therefore now you're left to, you know, make up whoever Babylon is that they want to say. This was the formation of the abominable church. This was the when they added, they figured out the 80 books they wanted to give to you. So they can control the narrative. They told you not to read it, that their priests would read it, their pastors will read it. You know, and if you read and get a different interpretation, they'll say, oh, your interpretation's wrong. We have these scholars over here, and these are what the scholars really say, even though these are the ones that have been hiding absolutely everything the entire time. But we're going to trust the scholars to tell us the truth, though, right? These priests... You know, hide themselves, make, you know, priests of Mahan, they make themselves seem as if they're godly people and if people need to um, go to them in order to get understanding. When there's nothing in the scriptures that talks about having to go to a Catholic priest, that they have the power or a Christian pastor, that they have the power to break down scripture. They had time when we were asleep, <clears throat> but those times are now over. And then you got these Christians today who want to, you know, make up their own doctrine. They can step over the laws, the statutes, the commandments of the Most High. They don't have to listen to the Most High and the things that he wants, and they get to make it into heaven. They can do that because, you know, it's Babylon. It's uh, confusion. 
that's all that they do. They, they just come up with confusion. They come up with these, uh, you know, these pretty memes and these nice things about hope and coming together and working together. But it's always, um, you know, to keep us at the bottom. Nothing new. Now, 2nd Ezra 16. We're going to talk a little bit about 2nd Ezra 14, 15, and 16. Okay? <clears throat> and in order to get a little bit more understanding, but we have to understand 2nd Ezra 16, look at the top. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Because he's talking about destruction for these places. Places over in the third part. Okay, so when it's talking about these, these destruction movies, they're always talking about America. But you don't see the destruction going over on the three parts. Well, second interest letting you know that there's going to be destruction coming at the three parts for what they did to the most highest chosen people. It says, gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair. Be well your children and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. A sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent up among you, and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you, and uh, what is he that may drive them away? Okay, so these things are all set sent, uh, sent on the uh, three parts. Okay, so now, once you understand that, now you go back. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit to, let me see, do I have 15 on here? No. Yes. Okay. Let me make sure I got what I wanted here. I'm going to actually start at 14 at the end, because what we have to understand is that <clears throat> these scriptures are not written like this chapter's 14 and 15, and that's it. It's a letter. So if it's a letter, then it goes in order. Okay. So let's read it like that. And let's look at what's been going on. Uh, for a while, as far as like the awakening of the people, the 80 books, then the Most High put the first and second sticks together. And then it's, just, it's not even just the first and second sticks, it's first and second sticks, and it's also all these other writings that then you get much more clarification once you understand, you know, the first and second stick, which is the Bible and the Book of Mormon. Once you get that, then you go back to the other writings, you get more understanding. Okay? We'll go to Second Edges 14. Uh, we'll start at 45, talking about the uh, introduction of more books, okay? And it came to pass when the 40 days were filled, that the highest spake, saying, the first that thou hast written, publish openly, so there's your Bible, that the worthy and unworthy may read it, okay? So we got everybody can read the Bible, everybody can get those books. But keep the 70 last, that thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. For in them is a spring of understanding, the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge. So at the end, the Most High is going to give more books to the wise, who are then going to be the ones that are going to be um, the fountain of wisdom and the stream of knowledge. There are going to be certain ones where they're going to be given more knowledge. That knowledge is going to be downloaded by the Most High through the Holy Spirit, given more understanding. Now, so we've had that. We've had the... Um, the second stick now for about a year. We've been teaching through that, you know, giving more knowledge and understanding as the Most High sees fit. You know, as the Most High gives us more understanding, we impart that to you. Now, we don't stop and I, and I think of something totally different. Now, just we're going to continue with the letter. You know, man, never, just about everybody here should have, you know, these books, you know, second measures. Okay. Now, all this new knowledge is supposed to be coming out. All these books are supposed to be coming out. Now, let's look at, let's just continue with the letter. 15 and 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Most High. So this is talking to the ones who have been using these other books, giving us information. It's not just for anybody. So you got to understand that they also cut these letters a certain way in order to cause confusion. Okay? And cause them to be written in paper for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity, incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. So people are going to be speaking against the ones who are reading other books. They're going to be speaking against the ones that the Most High is imparting more knowledge to. And that has been happening for quite a while. 
because of these ones who have only read the ones read the 80 books i said that's all that they've been given that's all they can understand but the most i said that there's going to be others that are going to get more information i said i've never gotten a, any a video that explain that all i get is a couple of verses that talk about don't read any other books said you know the the wicked ones put that in there because they knew that at the end there's going to be a certain group of people that are going to be given given more information and more knowledge so they had they they know that so they got to set up a whole you know a whole group of people a whole section of people especially that look like us that tell you don't read anything else because they don't want this knowledge to get out they don't want this information to get out why because babylon has been setting everything up to hide herself so let's continue uh or second address 15 we started four for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness so all the people who are unfaithful to this truth and don't follow the holy spirit and the and more information are going to die okay so you're going to die in their unfaithfulness behold saith the lord i will bring plagues upon the world the sword uh, with the sword famine death and destruction so there's those plagues getting ready to come okay for wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. That right there connects with uh, Revelation 18. Let me see here. Revelation 18, let's go there really quick. About how everything has reached up to the heavens and the Most High is, is done, giving them their time. Okay, let's get that real quick. Revelation chapter 18, five. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. So let's, but, but let's look at four, because this is what we're at right now. These things have now reached up to the Most High. He's now causing that separation. Let's look at four. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So right now that Most High is causing that separation right now. Okay? That's what's going on in this society right now. And why is that? Verse 5, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High hath remembered her iniquities. Now it says, reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. And the cup of which she hath filled, filled to her double. That's talking about Joel 2. That's talking about the cleansing of the land. You know, he's telling a certain group of people to come out of her, be separate from her, and four. Then when you skip to six, it's like reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her. Okay. Double according to her works. So she's going to get double. She's going to get destroyed. And the cup of which she hath filled, filled to her double. So the cups of drag that she's given to us, she's going to get double. So this here, the six looks as if it's the things that are happening here on our lands in order to cleanse our inheritance. Okay, so now let's go back to Second Ezra. It's a, it's a lot of information, you know. I said so. It's it's a lot of things going on right here. Let's see. So, uh, Second Ezra six again, fifteen and six. <clears throat> For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and her hurtful works are fulfilled. Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching her wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in, the, in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Okay, so right there in eight. You're, you're listening to how, you know, the most, these, these people, our people have already been destroyed. They've already been killed. Their blood has already been spilled. But see, according to the church, this is something that's going to happen in the future. See, they're hiding all of the things they've already done to our people. And so it's a very ingeni uh, ingenious, the way that they've hidden all the things that they've done. No one brings it up. No one talks about it. But the people of the Most High, we bring it up, we talk about it, but the rest of the world tries to just ignore it because they've been complicit, because they've been giving, um, you know, they've been giving glory and honor to this abominable church. That's like, like Psalms 83 and all the, the whole world working together against us. Nine, and therefore saith the Most High, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. 
Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Okay, so he's going to be removing people again. He's not going to suffer them to, to do what? To dwell in the land of Egypt. The land of Egypt, the three parts also, and he's also talking about cleansing them, the lands over here. Okay, so except the whole world is under Egypt, Egypt or Babylonian control. So the Most High is going to prepare his land of Goshen, and he's going to be moving the people into the land of Goshen in order to be um, spared. Okay, let's go to 12. Actually, uh, 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. Okay, so right there again, he's bringing them somewhere. He's bringing his people somewhere. Again, removal of the people. We've talked about it now. And um, let's see, Apocalypse of Elijah. All right. We talked about that there, right there. Our removal from one place to another. Okay. We'll get that again, actually, in another book right now. Let's go here. Um, <clears throat> stretch out again, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. So he brings them, he removes them, just like Revelation 11. And then as soon as he removes them, what happens? And smite Egypt with plagues as before, and will destroy all the land thereof. So he's going to destroy their lands, not his inheritance. He's destroying their lands. So why? How do you know that? Look at 12. Egypt shall mourn, okay? And the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishments that, uh, that God shall bring upon it, Okay? They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting and hail, and a, with a fearful constellation. So there's something coming that's coming to destroy. It's a fearful constellation. Something in the skies that's coming to destroy the lands of Egypt or Babel or pretty much the whole world is under that whole, you know, mindset. So that's huge, you know. I said that whole fearful constellation. That's something to kind of think about. There's something that's coming, and I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit in the Colburn, because it's been here before. They've seen it before, but it's been hidden, that information about that fearful constellation. See, that those little, they put those little tidbits in there, but you won't get that out of the Bible. You have to go to other books that are going to give you that history of the destroyer, which is going to come again. They know it's going to come again, and they know it's going to bring plagues and destruction. So what does this fearful constellation do? Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. So you got the sword and the destruction. You got the destroyer coming. Okay? You got two types of destruction. The sword, the most high's uh, you know, the most high bringing his his sword to cleanse the land. And you also got a destroyer or a destruction in this in disguise to destroy the lands of you know the three parts as well. And one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their, in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings, nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. The kings and the princes, are, they're not going to listen to them because they're already gone. They're already in their bunkers. They're already hiding. They didn't stand up with the people. They ran away, just like they're running right now. And man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Many things, etc., are going on right now. Making sure I got all this information for you guys. You know, and it talks about the removal of a people from uh, one part of the world to another. It talks about that in um, Baruch 4. It talks about how our people are going to be removed. You know, I'm, I'm, I was going to read it. Let me get it real quick. Table of contents. Go to go to Baruch chapter four, all the way towards the end. Um, let's actually read a little bit more of this. Baruch four, <clears throat> let's start at thirty. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Okay, so this is the restoration of his people. This is the remembering of our people. This is him turning his head from the other nations and turning it back to his people and bringing those blessings back to his people. Miserable are they, miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoiced at thy fall. All the other, the whole world, Psalms 83, who's been, you know, rejoicing at our fall, who's been giving, you know, praise and glory to the abominable church. 
Miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy sons. Okay? For as she rejoiced at thy ruin, and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. Now this is important. Here we go. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. So you're talking about those lands over there again, because remember our lands over here are being renewed. So this destruction and how people aren't going to be there for a very long time, that can't be over there. I mean, I can't be over here in our inheritance. That must be over there. Okay? Again, 35. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. O Jerusalem. Okay, so our land's over here. Look. Look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from the Most High. Lo, thy sons come whom thou sentest away, they come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the glory of by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of the Most High. So now you got your people, your, our, our people being, being brought back home. So again, it's 36 and 37. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from the Most High. Lo, thy sons come whom thou sentest away. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of the Most High. So they're being brought from the three parts back home to the, our, our inheritance. They're being brought to a land that has been renewed and restored while they're leaving a land that is being utterly destroyed by fire and the Most High. Okay. So as you can see, heaven and earth are about to collide. We're about to get, we're getting more knowledge and understanding. Again, we know what we prophesy in part, we know in part. And the Most High is bringing these parts together to give us more knowledge and understanding. Isaiah, Isaiah 11, one of the subscribers uh, posted this in the comment section. It was perfect for what's going on right now. So I'm going to read this right now. Let's see here. Making sure I'm getting everything I need here. <clears throat> Isaiah 11 and 10. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his, and his rest shall be glorious. The Gentiles are going to seek the Most High's chosen people in order to give them the true understanding and cleaving to them. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. So our people are scattered to the four corners. All right. And he shall um, set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Okay? But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west. So, you know, again, they throw their stuff in there about the Philistines or whatever else. In the other books, it talks about how these angels are going to be getting people, recovering our, our nations, and bringing them. Okay, but again, what does it say here? Uh, towards the west, we, our people are going to be gathered and taken towards the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, okay, and the children of Ammon, and shall obey them. So you got a lot. Of, this is like I said, this is a going on worldwide, not just in one little area, okay. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite in it the seven streams and make men go over dry shod. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was uh, to Israel in the day that he came out of the land of Egypt. So 
So it's, this is still confirming what's going on. And Ezra's talking about the removal of his people and them coming back home. We're just confirming what's going on over there in Baruch as well. Okay. So now we're going to get into the Colbrin talking about the destroyer. The destroyer, you know, this asteroid or whatever it is in the sky that brings us destruction has done it before. The destroyer arrives, okay? All right, this is not the best picture, but it's the best I could do. I was, <laughs> so you guys just follow, and it's also on the website, bigjuda.com, where you guys can download, okay, the link and check it out yourselves as well. All right, I'm going to read here chapter five, the destroyer, part three, from the scroll of Adifa. The doom shape called the destroyer in Egypt was seen in all the lands thereabouts. So this was seen in Egypt, okay? In color, it was bright and fiery, in appearance changing and unstable. It twisted about itself like a coil, like water bubbling into a pool from the underground supply, and all men agree it was a most fearsome sight. It was not a great comet or a loosened star, being a more like a fiery body of flame. Uh, let's see. Its movements on high were slow. Below it swirled in the manner of smoke, and it remained close to the sun, whose face it hid. There was a bloody redness about it, which changed as it passed along its course. It caused death and destruction in its rising and setting. It swept the earth with gray cinder rain and caused many plagues, hunger, and other evils. It bit the skin of men and beasts until they became mottled, okay, with sores. All right, so this is what looks like it's coming here for the other nations, okay? The destruction. Remember, our lands at this time, like I said, the Most High said he's going to be renewing our lands and protecting his people. So now this looks like it's coming on Egypt or Babylon uh, once again, okay? The earth was troubled and shook. The hills and mountains moved and rocked. The dark smoke-filled the heavens bowed over earth and a great howl came to the ears of living men born to them upon the wings of the wind it was the cry of the dark lord the master of dread thick clouds of fiery smoke passed before him and there was an awful hail of hot stones and coals of fire the doom shape thundered sharply in the heavens and shot out bright lightings the channels of water were turned back unto themselves when the land tilted and great trees were tossed about and snapped like twigs. Then a voice like 10,000 trumpets was heard over the wilderness and before its burning breath, the flames parted. The whole of the land moved and mountains melted. The sky itself roared like 10,000 lions in agony and bright arrows of blood sped back and forth across its face. Earth swelled up like uh, bread upon the earth. This was the aspect of the doom shape, called the destroyer, when it appeared in days long gone, by in olden times. It is thus described in the old records, few of which remain. It is said that when it appears in the heavens above, earth splits open from the heat, like a nut roasted before the fire. I remember these, these, this information was in the old records. They've already known that, but few remain because they hide all this information. They don't want people to know about the destruction that is coming on the three parts. Okay. Then flames shoot up through the surface. Okay. And leap about like fiery fiends upon black blood. The moisture inside the land is all dried up. Okay. So that goes back there about the moisture in the land dried up. There's your... Uh, what is it? Apocalypse of Elijah. Can't find any water. Okay. The pastures and cultivated places are consumed in flames and they and all trees become like uh, white ashes. That goes back to your second address 15. The destruction of the pastures and the lands. Okay. Important part right here. The doom shape is like a circling ball of, of flame, which scatters small fiery offspring in its train. It covers about a fifth part of the sky and sends writhing, um, snake-like fingers down to earth. Before it, the sky appears frightened, and it breaks up and scatters away. 
Midday is no brighter than night. It spawns a host of terrible things. These are things that said, these are things said of the destroyer and the old records. Read them with a solemn heart, knowing that the doom shape has its appointed time and will return, return again. Now that makes a whole lot of sense as to what you're seeing with all these people running away, all these people quitting their positions, all, you know, all of them moving to underground bunkers. See, they have these records. They kept all these records from us. So they know there's a point, an appointed time for it to return. Now it makes a lot more sense. Okay. Again, the knowing that the doom shape has its appointed time and will return. It would be foolish to let them go unheeded. Now men say, such things are not destined for our days. May the great God above grant this, uh, grant that this to be. Grant that this be so. But come, the day surely will, and in accordance with his, nat with his nature, man will be unprepared. Is man not prepared? Is man prepared for what's to come? We know that they are not. So the vast majority of people are just sitting here worrying about things that do not matter when this is actually coming right now. Like I said, the destroyer arrives, okay? It's going to be arriving. It's going to be destroying, you know, the other nations that have pretty much kept us at the bottom. It's a transition. That's what we're living in right now. We're living in a transition, you know, from Esau to Jacob, just like Second Ezra 6 and 9. You know, and they've been hiding themselves, hiding their actions, hiding their destruction. And now through at the end, the Most High is bringing more knowledge and understanding out so that we may understand what we're living in and what's to come surely on the earth. Terrible times are coming on the earth. And all we can do is pray to the Most High and pray for him to uh, protect us. You know, and that's what we're doing every day, praying for a restoration and praying for his protection because there's going to be horrible things that are going to be coming soon on the earth. All praise is to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who was wisdom, who was the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.